we just welcome you to Gateway Family Church. We just thank you for watching in with us. And we just pray right now. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just ask you to just invade your presence right now. In everybody's home, in this place that we're at now, God, we just invite your presence to be here right now, Father. God, we have come just to encounter you wherever we're at, all together, united as one church, God. God, we just want to experience you and know exactly what you're doing in this time, Father. We know that you are our this time, God, and that you have something specifically for us right now, God. So we just invite you. We invite your presence just to come in here and just invade this place. And we just ask right now that wherever you're at in your home or just watching on your phone to be able to just stand up, lift your hands, clap your hands, join in with praise for us. Don't just, don't just watch, but participate just like you're right here in the sanctuary with us. So come on, let's worship. Nothing 
can't stand it, kids. I choose to pray, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I choose to pray, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I choose to praise.
to me Oh God Just keep running after me Keep running after me
Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being. Giants are still being 
Thank you for watching Gateway Family Church. Join us Tuesday night at 7 p.m. for our online Bible study as we dive deep into the Word of God. And come be a part of Wednesday night prayer meeting at 7 p.m. because we know right now the most important thing we can do is come together and pray. The thing I look forward to the most is our weekly Zoom Bible study. If you would like to join us, send us a message on Facebook. We know how important it is to honor God with our tithes and offerings, and we have made it easier than ever to give. You can give online, you can text to give, or you can mail in your tithes and offerings. We are so happy that you joined us today, and we hope you enjoy today's message. All right, here we are. And if we were in person, one of the things we like to do is let the worship team know how much of a blessing they are. And even though we are online only at this time, they still have a way of being able to lead us into the presence of God. Uh, that's, that's amazing. So I want you to give them a comment and a shout out right now. And uh, what do you know? Here we are, you know, we've been blessed and grateful for months. We've been able to meet and worship together in person. Um, and yet here we find ourselves coming into Thanksgiving and we're online and we haven't been like this for months. And, you know, with Madison County doing a, a state of a emergency because of the virus and then the very thing that's been on the news that's gone around the world and it seems to get closer and closer. Maybe you've experienced from people here and there far off, but man, it's now not just in our backyard and on our doorstep, but maybe even in your home. And so here we are faced with our friends, our family experiencing and uh, with battling with the virus and uh, not something that necessarily uh, we've been praying for to, to be this way, but yet uh, here we are. We find ourselves in a place of needing to, uh, just for a quarantine time, to go back to online temporarily until uh, uh, things are continuing to get to a, a place where we'll be right back in person. Even though we've been uh, obviously praying and applying the blood and believing for it not to come near our dwelling, but if you're at a place where you find it in your in your dwelling place, not what you were expecting. Uh, Isaiah, I think, says it best in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2. He says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Man, I love that. And how many can say amen to that? Maybe this isn't what we were praying for to happen in this way. But if you find it that, it, that it did come near your dwelling, if you are battling experiencing it, the great thing is we know that we are not alone. That when we go through the waters, he's right there with us. That if we're going through it, we're not alone that he's there. And for that, we can say, thank you, God. And so uh, how many can say amen to that? Come on, give me an amen, an agreement on there. Uh, give a praise emoji. Let me hear from you uh, even right now. And so... Um, 
But, but here we are, not expecting to, but uh, to, to have to go back to online right now. But, but one thing we can say that we're grateful about, if there's anybody that you know, anybody that we know that, they, that they're battling with the virus is that everybody's going through it, right? Um, when you pass through the waters, we're not staying there. They are getting better and better day by day. And for that, we are so grateful and thankful for so here we are, um, uh, just temporarily once again. Uh, so grab your Bibles now. Let's grab, pull up a seat to the table, would you, uh, as, as we uh, open up his word uh, here today. And um, we're just going to pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for opening up your word to us here today. Lord, we just thank you for your word, your precious, priceless word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, we don't just sing every uh, time we meet together because it's what our parents did, our grandparents did, or what we just do in church. But Psalms says it in Psalms 100. Uh, it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Uh, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know you that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us. And we not ourselves, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And, and here we are, thanksgiving. We just got done singing praises. Uh, and this is the lifestyle that we live. This is who we are. This is what we lean towards and lean into in times when we're thankful. Yes, in celebration and even in times when it's not a celebration. We, we're at a place where we strive to be at a place that we're grateful. Not, a, not somebody who's a spoiled brat or complaining or finding something to murmur or complain about. But somebody who can be thankful and grateful. And this is that time where we come and maybe we're not able to celebrate Thanksgiving like we have in, in years past. I don't know what your plans are, but um, whether you're going to be serving turkey with your family or just being at a place in your home with the immediate, not gathering with everybody, I, whatever the case may be. But this is a time we celebrate even in our nation when our founders of this uh, beautiful nation came together with the American Indians and celebration of being sustained of the harvest time, uh, being able to have the, the produce of what was the provision of what they needed to store up for the winter months, to be able, it was this time of coming together. And in our time, when our nation needs to come together in the midst of chaos and different corners of our nation happening, even now as I speak with unsettled unrest and political tensions and um, debates and division left and right. As a time now, we need to be reminded of what it's like to come together, what it's like to be thankful and grateful in a time uh, of a year that we had least expected to be in. And this is what uh, we challenge ourselves, isn't it? This is what we, we strive to, to be in this place now, that our hearts lean into a place of being this grateful and thanksgiving. So at this table, though, today we're dealing with um, some things that come to my heart. And one of those t things that we minister, you, you know it's, it's, it's precious to my heart, uh, is the, the disciples on the road to Emmaus. They had just left at a time of being let down, discouraged, depressed, because Jesus being crucified. Uh, all their hopes and dreams just seemed to die in front of them as they had seen our precious Lord and Savior uh, maybe give his last breath uh, hanging on the cross. They're walking not realizing that they're walking with Jesus, and they're walking along, and yet they give the testimony that did not our hearts burn within us when you open up the scriptures. I love the description and, and everything that they experienced because as they, the strangers seem to walk on, they constrain them to please come in and, and stay. Don't, don't go on. Because they're bringing them to a place that I, like we sit at right now, this coming into this week of a table. And it's at that place that, that proves that these are some of the disciples that have met and ate with Jesus previously. 
They were there even, right? At that place, once again, of that table. Um, he, he takes the bread, he blesses it, and he breaks it. And their eyes are opened up that all along that this was Jesus. And he's not dead, but yet he is alive. And it's beautiful. I love the fact that God still comes alongside of us at our times when distress, at our times of, boy, this wasn't what I was praying for. I can't, how did this turn out this way? And yet God comes walking along with us in those times and we don't even realize it's him. We don't even realize that he is the one ministering to us at that moment. And when their eyes are opened up at the place of a table, it's a place of communion, Right? It's this place of communion that, that everything changes in our lives. It's at that place. So they were there. If you, when we're talking about the table, probably one of the most famous places is the Last Supper. We've seen artists uh, depict the Last Supper in many different ways of, of this. And, but yet the disciples, they had given everything. They dropped their nets to follow Jesus. But one of the greatest things was, yes, being able to walk with Jesus and see the miracles time after time. Watch as he was moved with compassion and ministered, yes, in sermons, yes, in laying on of hands and watching him. And yet the greatest moments, I would have to believe, were beyond the services, beyond the ministry, but being able to pull up to the table and ask questions with Jesus and Talk with Jesus, laugh with Jesus, cry with him. Hear of his thoughts and what he was going through. And, you know, in, in our cultures, it's not been until this year that the family tables maybe been dusted off. You know, family dinners may become more prevalent in this year because uh, the warp speed life schedules had Slowed down, slowed down enough to spending more time with the family, more time at home. And, and uh, it's at that place of a table where you get to sit down and go beyond small talk and begin to know uh, more about what the person's day was like or even what the person's, what's on their heart. And this is what the disciples got to be a part of at these tables. And this was the place where Jesus would put and institute this Thing that we call communion today. This was that place where he said, do this in remembrance of me. And yes, we still wholeheartedly celebrate communion in our church services. Many in their homes as a family still personally are the institution of communion, even at a personal level. And for that is something that we'll forever do, won't we? But yet, more than just the elements of juice and bread, more than just the elements of communion, just, he, just that place of what communion means and what it's all about of being able to be. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. And, and let us not be at the place where we take the elements of communion, but not commune with the one who instituted what it was all about. This to do, don't forget the price that I've paid and the reason why I've given my life that you don't understand he's talking to the disciples was so that we could walk in a personal relationship, that it would be something far greater than a God who meets with a Moses on a mountaintop at a long distance, but at a close face to face, at a place with a relationship that is close and not far away, this place that we call communion. And it's there that, that, um, that we find this, the, the things that we are dealing with here today. Because when, when I'm at a place where the thing I was praying for has come to my dwelling that I wasn't expecting, that I wasn't uh, declaring or praying for, knowing that, that I'm not alone, knowing that when I'm going through it, that, I'm, that he is right there. Coming alongside, why are you so downcast? Why are you so upset? Um, like he did to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Um, like he does to you and me today when, when we're fighting the things that we weren't expecting, but realizing that if we go through the waters, if this is part of the testimony that we weren't believing for, but the thing that we can be grateful for is that he's right there with us and that we can go through it in a way and come out with the way that we're walking with him. Now it's in this place that 
comes to uh, another table in Scripture that we're going to deal with, and that's Psalms 23. It's in Psalms 23 that it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restoreth my souls. Right? But the table is in verse 5. He prepares the table before me and the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. This is so beautiful, isn't it? That maybe the enemies is, this isn't what I was praying for. Right? Discouragement. Wait a minute, God. I, uh, this wasn't the verse of Scripture I quoted. Um, maybe the enemies uh, of doubt, fear, you know, all these different things that, that come at us, uh, enemies. It doesn't have to be a giant taunting us that David faces. These enemies could be, well, at this place where God says, even in the presence of fear, even in the presence of, of discouragement, don't overlook that there is a table that I have prepared for you, even in the midst of all of that. But it's at this place of the table and the presence of the enemy that he says that you anoint my head, that you anointeth my head with oil and that my cup runs over. It's at the place of communion that my thought process is realigned with heaven's thoughts. It's at this place of communion that this um, isn't just enough or the cup being half full, but it's at a place of overflow. My cup runs over. This doesn't happen but at the place of communion. This happens at when I'm able to sit at the table he's prepared for me. Even if it's not at a table of celebration, but where enemies are surrounding, it's at this place that he says, you know what? I'm with you in celebration and I'm with you even with enemies surrounding you, that I'm with you. And as we come into this week of celebrating at a table, let us celebrate and remember at the place of the table that he has prepared for you and for me. Even if you are battling the virus right now, your family or your friends realizing that it's a time of going through them, even in a place uh, of enemies surrounding me, that he's right there with me with enough oil to anoint our heads, the thoughts that go through uh, to override any complaining with a place of being grateful and a place of being thankful. You see, when we're at this place of the table, at the place of communion, now it becomes a natural response that I can become grateful and thankful. And although, that, like we've talked about, oftentimes in our life when we're thankful, walking in a place of thanksgiving, it may have to start by faith. It may take a decision. I choose to be grateful and be thankful. But... That is the only place it gets us, that we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, right? Into his courts with praise. I get into that place where I'm going to start being grateful and thankful, even by faith, knowing that that's how I get into his presence. I enter into his presence with a place of thanksgiving. This is why the enemy wants to come. This is why enemies surround us to try to get us out of a place of thankfulness and gratefulness and into a place of murmuring and complaining, because he wants to be se to separate us from what? The presence of God. He wants us to separate us. And isn't it something that Jesus was walking alongside the, the disciples on the road to Emmaus in such a way his presence was there and they didn't even realize it. Why? Because their own thoughts, their own experiences of what they've just been through were able to override the presence that was walking with them all along the way. Why he's opening up scriptures, they, they were feeling a burning on the inside. Like Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. They could experience these levels, but it wasn't until they're able to get to a table of communion that their eyes were opened up, that the thing they were depressed about, they didn't have to be depressed about any longer. The enemy tries to come with looking at reasons to complain so that we can get out of his presence because he knows that it's in his presence that there's fullness of joy. That they know that it's in his presence, it's that place that we are to live. And it's out of that place 
that we enter into thanksgiving and praise. And it may start with a choice. Yeah, it may start maybe by steps of faith. But when you get to the table, to the place of communion, into his presence, it's the only natural response then that happens in our life. And in our heart is that maybe it started by faith. But when I'm in his presence, I can only be thankful. Even if I'm still surrounded by enemies. That means I haven't seen the victory. That means the wall hasn't fallen down yet. It, it means the, the sea hasn't split yet. And I'm not walking on dry ground. I'm surrounded by my enemies, yet in his presence, I could be thankful. In his presence, I could be grateful for who he is. And it's at that place now that what may start by faith or may be a choice does not have to stay there. Because it becomes a natural response. I'm not being grateful by true grit. I'm not be thank, being thankful, gritting my teeth. But I can be at a place where I am leaning in to the person who I've been created to be. This is who I am. A person. A person that's thankful. Out of a natural response of his presence. And this happens at the table of communion. The table of thanksgiving at the place of who we are. This is, we are the believers. We are the ones who can walk through what we're going through and be able to walk through it thankful at this place right now. And so let this be that reminder that this is what we lean into because of the one who's prepared a table before before us, the one who wants to sit and wants to, to hear our thoughts, wants to know what's on our heart, and then even more so, God, what's on your heart? God, what are your thoughts? Now the anointing touches the place of our head, the place where the armor of God refers to as the helmet of salvation, right? This is the place of salvation that happens from our thoughts, our complaints, our griping and our murmuring into a place where now um, there is an anointing that happens where my cup runs over. It's a place of communion. And so when we're at a communion table, it's not just me doing all the talking either, is it? But it's saying, God, what is it that you're saying right now? Lord, I want to lean in. What is it that you have to hear? Because at the last table, we see that there are those that are kind of trying to get their best position. That political spirit was even there in that moment. Who's going to sit on your right hand? Who's the one that's most spiritual to be able to sit at your right hand, Lord? Um, but yet John, um, he, he was there with the embrace of, of being as close as he could to the heart of Jesus at the supper table, right? He wasn't asking about if he could sit on his right hand because he had moved past. Maybe he'd already shared from his heart, but he was embracing. He sensed uh, maybe even as well that there was a concern that Jesus was actually saying some things but other people weren't hearing because they were too busy talking. But John was at a place that it, Jesus, if you're going through something, I want you to know I'm right here with you, Jesus. If you're going, if you're getting ready to go through, I don't know, I don't understand all this, but I want you to know you have my embrace. And it said that he, that he was there and he had his ear listening, right? To that place, the place of his heart. And I think this is the beauty of what communion is at the communion table, is this is the place where we find what's on God's heart. This is what realigns my thoughts. This is what anoints. This is why I carry the anointing. The anointing is a powerful word, powerful sermons. We're in powerful services where we feel the anointing. But the anointing means to rub on. And when we are to become like him, this happens at the place where we are close enough, where we are smeared with the fragrance of who he is, with the power of an oil, that, that is very tangible. It's at that place where I'm smeared at the place of my thoughts with his anointing, with who he is. 
and now I walk through grateful and I walk through thankful at a place where maybe I was complaining before. And again, this is who we are, isn't it? Are you ready, right, for the Lord to lead us into a place where our heads anointed, where our cup is overflowing, where we are truly thankful um, in celebration or in the presence of our enemies? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that you lead us and come alongside of us. And if we're not at a place of thankfulness, you not just bring us to your table to where we can once again come into a place of communion with you. Lord, we thank you. This is our heart's desire that we hear your heart, that we know your thoughts, and that we be a people that are not ungrateful, but we be a people that are thankful for who you are and knowing that we're not going through anything alone. And we thank you for the table that you prepared for us. And we thank you for this precious table. Lead us into this place of thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, we love you, and we're so glad to hear all the amazing reports of everybody doing good. And um, as we continue on, we have an incredible thanksgiving. We would like to thank you for watching Gateway Family Church. Whether you're a member here at Gateway or you just seen this in your newsfeed, we're so happy that you joined us today. We would like to give everybody the opportunity at the end of every service to know where they stand with God. Maybe whenever you're listening to the sermon just now that something is tugging on your heart, that, it, that is residing with you, and you wanna know more, you wanna go deeper, or maybe you just, you, you have been raised in church or been to church before, but you just are not sure where you stand with God. Well, right now, if that's you, wherever you're at, it just says as if you believe in your heart and declare with your mouth that He is the Son of God, that you will be saved. So right now, where you're at right now, if you just repeat this prayer after me, then you can be sure that you know where you stand with God. So dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. We believe that you are the Son of God and we ask you to forgive us of everything that we have done. God, we just ask you to just come in our heart and set us free today. And we believe in you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me right now, then you should know without a shadow of a doubt where you stand with God and that you are saved. And the next step would be is to get plugged into a church, whether here at Gateway with us, or if you have a home church that you attend, we just, we just want you to just, just get plugged in and go at it with your full heart and dedicate your life to God. You're never gonna be the same. If you have any prayer requests, We'd be happy to pray with you. You can just email us at hope at gatewayfamilychurch.com or you can just send us a message right here on Facebook. And for any other more information, you can check us out at gatewayfamilychurch.com.